Hello guys, S2W here as your average consumer with your casual consumer's review. For today's video, I have one of the most interesting sneakers that the Jordan brand has created recently in 2017. It's an iconic model and colorway that was first released in 1985, and as time continued to pass and technology continued to grow, Jordan brand has finally implemented present day materials and technologies on this shoe. For those who have stuck around since my early reviews, I have mentioned I don't own any Jordans. That spell broke when I camped out during the Toronto Jordan store opening a few months back before this video's upload date. But even after that, I never really did do a review on those pickups. So marking my first Jordan brand review of my channel, today I have the Jordan 1 High Fly Knit Band or Bread Colorway for a review. I was able to pick up my pair in store at Foot Locker. During the morning of launch, they were still available on Nike.ca, but I still arrived at the mall early when it opened hoping to get an easy W. However, when I arrived there, they only had two pairs left, but one of the pairs were luckily my size. I was surprised these sold out already, but my guess is that it's a very limited release in store. Either way, Jordan's first silhouette, the ones, is an important piece of history in sneaker culture. Even 30 years later, the AJ1 silhouette basketball shoe would fit in almost every outfit and still look great. Having updated with different uppers throughout the years, from patent leather to satin to flyweave, now they have finally redone the upper with one of today's top of the line material, the Nike Flyknit. By words, it's a significant change as Flyknit itself has left a large impact in sports and leisure wear. Arguably a similar impact that the Jordan 1s have left behind. But functionality wise, will the Air Jordan 1 Flyknit become a classic staple for the coming years? Let's take a closer look at these sneakers. When we look at this shoe, I have to admit it's a really weird feeling. Mostly because for me personally, the first thing that comes to my mind when I hear the name AJ1 Bread or Band, I immediately think of the tough, durable, and structural premium leather designs on the red and black upper. Still, this updated makeover retains the classic look of the OG silhouette. But for this model, they have changed almost everything material-wise into Flyknit, which most of you should already know is Nike's knitting technology known to maximize the flexibility and ventilation of the shoe, which also decreases the overall weight as well. As we can see here, it's not just a simple piece of smooth fabric we're talking about. The weaving on this pair is quite spectacular, using various patterns and textures of Flyknit to replace the leather panels of the OG version. By touch, most of the upper feels very coarse and bumpy as I brush my fingers against it. Similar to most Nike Flyknit shoes, the material itself is not stretchable, but rather stay intact together to offer better flexibility without sacrificing a lot of the structural integrity of the original Air Jordan 1. If we look closely, most of the Flyknit upper on this shoe is sewn together with two colors. What I mean by that is we look at a certain spot on the shoe, we will see both red and black knits together, one on top of the other, and obviously one more apparent than the other. The toe box is mostly red, laying on top of the black knitting seen between the red knit openings. Same thing at the back, red knitting is the most apparent, but you'll see a few black knitting occasionally in between the knit openings. Again, on the side panels, you will see mostly black knitting, yet with a hint of red in between those openings. In other words, each section is not strictly red or black, but both at the same time giving us a two-tone appearance. Near the midfoot portion of the upper, we will see the iconic Nike swoosh branding swooping towards the back of the sneaker on both sides of the shoe. This swoosh is made out of leather though, providing us the hint of premium aesthetic to the sneaker. On top of this Nike swoosh is the famous Wings logo in red, seen only on the lateral side of the shoe. This patch is made out of leather as well, camouflaging into the red knitting right under it. Here is a look on the back of the sneaker with a small square-like leather patch at the back sewn dead center on top of the fly knit and tails of the Nike swoosh. There is also a soft heel cup behind the knit at the bottom of the shoe here to give some sturdy support, but overall, it still feels easily compressible if I push in the upper, whereas the original version is quite solid. As for the laces, it seems like they've chosen to use a different material for its laces. What I've heard is that these are wax laces instead of the regular cotton laces that we find on sneakers, which when tightened up, the laces itself won't be as easy to get undone due to the property of wax laces. And at the tip of these laces, we'll find some black metal lace tips as well. Under these laces, we'll see the tongue of the sneaker in black. This tongue is made out of fly knit, with a rib texture on the outside and a premium leather Nike Air logo patch at the top to honor the Air Jordan 1 legacy. On the other side of this patch is a unique graphic design with the year 1985 in gold stamped on it, almost like a thread telling off the number 1, signifying the knit appearance of the shoe. I was actually worried that the tongue is ribbed on the inside layer as well, but it turns out it's just smooth knit. Inside the shoe, we have a series of number in gold coloring. Having the shoe size starting off with the year 1985, the year that the original model was released, followed by 2017, the year this flatnet model was launched. I personally don't know what XC means, so let me know in the comments if you know. But as you can see, the text is on top of a leather lining. 
This inner lining basically embodied the whole section of the heel area. So basically, our ankles and Achilles are resting on premium leather material, which from what I know is different than the AJ1 Royals that I have, which only had a mesh inner lining. I have to say though, the back hair is not really that well padded if you compare it to the originals. It's a lot thinner, and in my opinion, is most likely done on purpose to decrease the weight and match the overall sleek visuals of fly knit shoes. Furthermore, they come with what seem to be leather insoles, with the Nike Air branding on the heel portion. These insoles are not quote unquote removable, as it seems to be glued shut on the midsole. You can take them out, but you will have to use some force to rip it out. As for the midsole and outsole, it's designed just like the regular models of the Air Jordan 1. We have a rubber cup sole construction to provide the sturdy support with an encapsulated Nike Air unit that offers lightweight cushioning, with some saying it's a zoom heel unit installed at the back. Anyways, here are some Jordan 1 high fly knit, band or bread colorway fit footage. Fit wise, since the store only had a 10.5 and an 11 left, I bought the 10.5 as it was my true to size. In the original versions, I find my true size fit very comfortably. For this AJ1 fly knit at my true size, I find them fitting roomier lengthwise as there are no toe guards squishing our toes up front anymore. In other words, if you have narrow feet, you could possibly be able to go half size down without any problem. I personally have wide feet, so at true to size, it still fits pretty amazingly, but I do feel if I had to fit in a half size down, I could potentially do it too. Although it is roomier, it doesn't translate to the sneakers fitting looser. It is still quite difficult to put the sneakers on like the originals. So if in any case you feel the shoe is too constricting, make sure you loosen up the laces, take them out, and release them as it could help a lot. Comfort wise, the flyknit material is definitely an upgrade. They do feel lighter in hand and on feet when you compare them to the all leather upper from the original. Again, because these are fly knit, we won't have to worry about any creasing happening, but then again, creasing is what gives personality to the Jordan 1s. Sole wise, it feels basically the same as regular AJ1s, but the insole in this shoe is something else. It feels thicker and honestly, quite plush and in words, almost like what a memory foam insole feels like. That's a huge upgrade in the cushioning that this sneaker will offer. Aesthetic wise, if I only look at this shoe alone and not compare them to the originals, I do like them. But that is not possible at all because the original bread ones hold too much of a significant history in the sneaker culture. There's no way anyone could buy this shoe without comparing it to the OGs. And honestly, if I have the originals, I don't think this flyknit variation hits the ball out of the park enough just yet. It's just something about the uneven surface on this flyknit makes it seem itchy to look at when compared to the smooth leather upper on the originals, making that model a lot more luxurious and high status to me. Price wise though, these were $240 Canadian before tax, $25 more than the originals. Not that huge of a difference, but I do personally feel that the leather material on the original is fancier, so you make the call if it's worth it. As always, throw me some likes if you like this video and let me know in the comments what you think about this update to the iconic Air Jordan 1. I feel sad for this variation honestly. It's really unfair for this shoe because the original is just too important in the sneaker world. It's one of those shoes where there's nothing wrong with it, but they decided to change it up to catch up with the times. Is that a bad thing though? Definitely not. Is it comfier than the originals? It sure is. If you don't have the OG bread ones like me, these are a really nice pickup in my opinion. The incentive to buy this version for someone like me is much bigger, especially for those who want the look of the AJ1 silhouette with a comfier lifestyle fit. But for those who follow the story behind the sneaker, which is lacking a lot nowadays, this is not a very impactful shoe. The impact has to come in another form, the flyknit in this case, but because the original model is such an iconic shoe without much problem, the originals will be very hard to beat. That's it for today, S2W signing off.